Hey guys, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modeling Bench, and here we are now back with the Vulcan build, and this is part 20. And I think this will probably be the shortest video in the whole series because I haven't really done much with it. Um, I've done some of the decal film removal, but I've been basically letting it all settle. Um, in fact, no, I haven't done a deck. I did the decal film removal in the last video, didn't I? So basically, I haven't touched it for a couple of days, uh, letting the decals go down, let them get really, really set and everything. Um, it's worth doing if you, if you are, you know, doing your decals over your clear coats and all that. It, it's best to try and kind of, you know, maybe pick up another project or do something else, do some research for your next project, because if you, you know, if you clear coat. And then like give it a couple of hours and then decal and then start to do your weathering you're going to damage what was there before uh, something i've experienced in the past with trying to decal too soon after clear coating is the clear coating is still a little sticky and you put the decal down and you can't move it it's gone it's the glue that's on there has reacted with the clear coat that hadn't quite cured and it's down and that's it you can't move it so it's best to sort of give yourself a couple of days in between. Um, you're going to see in a minute what I'm doing now involves a lot of masking. I'm going to really want to be masking over soft decals and stuff. So it's just basically a good idea to um, to just have some patience and leave it for a couple of days. As I say, pick up something else. I've been doing a little bit of work on that 72nd Lancaster, as you know. So basically, we're going to get this one done in the bag and then we're going to start on the, line of the 48th Lancaster. But if we look in here, we can see this is the um, colour guide you get with the Airfix um, kit. And you can see we've got all sorts of um, colours and stuff going on. We, we've got some tan flashes here. We've got a tan spot on the back of there, which I don't think mine's going to have. Uh, we've also got two tan circles down here. And we've also got, sorry, you can't see, we've got two tan circles down here. And we've got a tan area there now a lot of you a lot of you a few of you have commented about this all being wrong um, I think this is probably correct for the time it was which was 1966 as I've said before if you look at this aircraft now it doesn't even have the same tail fin so a fin capping should I say and it's not a blue steel I think it's a normal bomber but um and then this one here the same you know it's it's a bit weird now somebody did comment on the channel and say be very very careful of these on the bottom check your references make sure it could have had none just one or maybe the two um, and sure enough this way I've done XH562 as you know mine's got only one and it is painted black just like in there I've got the older exhaust I've got the black painted fin capping it's got the um, terrain following radar on the front which I call the nipple it's got the refueling probe um, this panel here is not this colour tan, it's just the square panel that's within that area, you can see there, and it's just the square panels there is black, and you've got these two circle areas here, and they are black or very dark grey or whatever, I'm going to paint them, um, I'm going to paint them XF85 rubber black, which is a kind of off black, we've got this panel here which is tan, we've got this panel here which is tan, that there is a decal, now I'm going to look now, I'm not sure about my references if I need to do this circle here as well, if that's the case, I'm going to have to turn the camera off and do some more masking. But basically, um, you know, you can check your references. Back in here, back on 120, page 126 of this book, we have a picture of XF, sorry, XH561. Okay, there she is. And this was taken, it doesn't say when it was taken, but you can see we've got four Vulcans here and a Lancaster flying over. So this is 561, so I have to assume that the upper surface of 562 would have been the same as this. Okay, so we've got the tan bit there, we've got the tan on the actual tail, and I believe I can see, and in there, I think I can see a tan circle on there, so I'm gonna have to stop the camera and do some remasking. Um, so we have to assume that 561 five, six, and 562 would have been the same because they would have been the next build numbers, I would imagine. Um, the picture I have here of the plane I've built is here, which is 562, which I've shown you to death. This picture is actually reversed. And you can see here the two circle areas underneath are actually dark grey or black or whatever. And that panel over there, you can see that panel on the bottom of the wing. 
that is actually dark grey or black as well. This black here, it looks like it's probably part of the uh, Rolls-Royce APU. And then while the undercarriage legs are down, it blows soot and crap all over the undercarriage door. So that could be what that is. So um, I'm going to be replicating that in my build. So you'll be seeing that. And you can also see that we've only got the one panel on the bottom. This side's got nothing. This side's got the one. And as I say, this photograph has been reversed. So this is all backwards, as I've said a million times. So um, I need to stop my mask, stop the camera now, and then mask up that circle. Where are we? One, two, six. I'm going to have a good look at that photograph and um, and see if I need that circle or not. OK, so I've done that now. So you can see the Vulcan. Here it is looking like a, a wrapped up Christmas present. So you can see masked off this panel under here for the black, masked off the two circles. And for these, I have used these wonderful circle masks. Now, the way these are designed to be used is you use the centre. You can see in there, you've got the circle, that's what you use. But you can actually use the outer as well. If you're careful and you put it down, it stays nice and flat. It will easily pull sort of oval. But um, absolutely wonderful. These are available from Premium Hobbies. These guys here down in Western Supermare. Uh, Ed did message me the other day. He said, have you been using my circle mask? Because all of a sudden, everybody's buying them. So uh, these are the extra large. And there's all sorts of different sizes. You get the small medium what have we got here we've got here they are um we've got one millimeter to 2.8 millimeters in the small we've got three millimeters to 4.6 millimeters in the medium we've got 4.8 to 6 millimeters in the this is the large and then you've got the extra large which is 6.2 to 7.6 and i've used a 6.4 here and I've used a 7.2 underneath. And the other beauty with them is, as you can see here, they are reusable. I've used these on wheels, and then I'm going to use them again and again and again, because that's the beauty of them. You can see here I've used centre mass and I've put them back. So, you know, if you're... Uh, I'm not so much tight, um, and I'm not, like, broke, but if I can reuse something, I will. Why throw it away if you can reuse it? So... People call me frugal. I think they're politely telling me I'm tight. But uh, anyway, so I'm going to put another bit of tape on there just to make sure that stays together because I don't want that to open up while we're spraying and then end up with the with the fin getting covered. The other thing is this model's covered in a gloss coat, so it'll be easy to remove any overspray or anything like that. So um, it'll be good. And it's been down for, this gloss coat's probably been down for about five days now I'd say seven days even so um what I'm going to do I've got the I've used Tamiya XF59 the instructions say to use uh 63 63 which it translates that's the humbral color translates into Tamiya XF59 it's just a light tan color so I've got the airbrush here I've got got this paint mixed up with um Mr. Color Leveling Thinners so just do a little quick test and we can see that it's spraying lovely and we've got to keep it very very dry so we don't get any creep we're going to push down the masking tape make sure we haven't got any dodgy bits or everything so what we do here is just come along and just spray this area in here okay this area here keeping it dry we don't want it wet because it'll creep under the tape uh, there's a bit of a funny moulding here. Now, the moulding on this side is different to the moulding on this side. Have a look at your model, decide what you're going to do, and go from there. Um, looks like a bit of a faux pas in the uh, mould making stage, or maybe in the mould design. So again, keeping it really dry, building it up really slowly. I don't want the paint to go wandering, so again, I'm going to put some masking tape pull that paper back together because it's so much easier just to do this now than spend hours removing it afterwards so go once again come along just get some tan on there as I say keep it you can see I'm keeping it dry it's not wet at all same here it's got mist recover leveling thinner so it's going to really really bite it's going to bite into that clear coat Mm. 
and again on the fin. Just get that bit there done. Again, keeping it dry. You certainly don't want any pooling. You don't even really want to see it shiny. You want to see it go down and just dry straight away. Come back to here. There we go. We'll give that a couple of minutes and then give it one more quick coat and we'll call it a day for that bit. Right, so as you can see there, that's all dried now. It's had a good couple of coats and we got the tan colour on there. So that's good. So now we can turn it over and start looking at these black areas. We've got the two circles here and that. So you have got a bit of paper on here to protect the canopy from being scratched. I could lay a t-shirt out on the bench or something, but it would just collect paint dust and everything. So I don't want to do that. So I've got my XF85 in here. If you're, into, if you're new to airbrushing and people will tell you I have to thoroughly clean the airbrush between colours, literally all I do, I put like one millilitre of thinners in there, brush it round with a brush, blow it through, yeah, and then just put the next colour in. If you're in between colours, don't worry about it. And if you are going to be doing stuff like this, always go light to dark, obviously. But um, we've done our test spray. We can see we've got a nice colour coming out there. So we can just come in and just dust in these areas. As I say, dusting them in, not going heavy, not getting it wet, just keeping it nice and dry. Again, this is um, XF85 Tamiya mixed with Mr. Colour Leveling Thinners. And you can see I've used a piece of paper with paper with holes cut in them, and uh, that, that's giving me my masking. If anything does leak underneath or whatever it's going to be a simple job of cleaning it up okay so we can see we got that very dark gray xf85 rubber black so that's all looking good so we can put that to one side over there and then we can get this ecm panel i think it's called again keeping it nice and dry you see i've got the uh, antenna there matched off because that's that stays white. Get airbrushing nice and dry. You see some people trying to flood it on. Just thin your paint, spray it dry, and you'll have no trouble. I'm just going to check my flow again because I'm not sure I've got paint coming out, it's fine. There we are, that's that done. Got a bit of paint there, that can go back in the pot and then ugly me airbrush out. Okay, so that's all painted now, so we'll get it unmasked and see how it looks. So we can literally just pull the pull the paper off like so. Best to do the unmasking while the paint is still soft if you can, and that way you'll avoid any peeling. Although with these Tamiya matte paints, they are quite what I call granular, so they don't tend to like form a film and peel. But it's always best do your unmasking while the paint's soft if you can. It will make life a lot easier for you and prevent the possibility of peeling. And now that's all come off as one. So what I will do now, I will take that off of there and I will keep this. This will stay in my masking set because now I've got a perfect circle mask there that will stay to the right shape because it's got tape around it. So I can put another bit of tape over the top of it like so and that will definitely keep it square if you like keep it square to keep it round if you know what I mean um, so we'll get under there get under here with a knife just lift the corner up and then get under there with the tweezers 
I'll lift that out there. So we've got one there. And then I can get the tweezers under there, I expect. It doesn't matter if we scratch that gear door because that's scrap anyway. So there we are. So that's those two circles done. They're looking lovely. And then this panel here is going to come off in one. There we go. That's looking lovely. So that's our two panels underneath. So happy with how they've come out. Now let's have a look at the top. So pull this paper off of here. That's one side. Pull this paper off of here. That's pulling lots of masking tape off with it. So just pull that off of there. Oh, by the way, thanks for all your comments, guys, um, regarding the, you know, sort of 20 minute video to see a complete build or doing it my way. It looks like a lot of you like to see it my way. Um, I certainly enjoy doing it this way. I wouldn't enjoy sitting in front of a camera for doing a build for sort of three weeks and then editing it all and ending up with a half hour long video. I like to kind of, I like the how to approach, you know, or the, not the how to, but the how I do it approach. I think a lot of you guys do too. So thanks for all your great comments. Much appreciated. And as I say, those that want to comment about boring or slow or whatever, I'll just delete the comments. So I wouldn't waste your time writing it. Anyway. Can't please all the, all the people all the time, can you? That's something my mum taught me. Right, so that's that one done. Uh, this one here I'm going to pick up on the edge again when you're doing this with a knife it's best to put the model down because if you do slip you'll scratch your paint and give yourself a whole lot of work there we go there's those circle masks again working perfectly you can see how lovely that circle is i think they give you a decal for that in the kit but somebody did say i think the decals are the wrong color but i'm not so sort of worried about that much accuracy anyway i've done a bit of a misc mask there i should have put the masking tape over a bit further which i will show you now in a second so I'm going to have to do a bit of a repair job there. Because there's that little piece in the middle and then we've got the bits either side. They can come up just like so. And then this bit here. There we go. So you can see there we've got our Fin flash there in the tan colour. We've got the fin flash there in the tan colour. We've got a circle. Now here, as you can see, I've mismatched, mis, mismasked it and it's gone onto the fuselage. So what I'll have to do there, I may, because the paint will still be fairly soft, let's see if we can get away with this. Let's get a cocktail stick out. I may be able to scratch this off. There we go, it's coming off lovely. So you know, as your paint's still soft, what we will do is we will take this cocktail stick and put a sharp point on it. You do this with canopies as well. And then just wipe along. Just There we go. As you can see, now it's perfect. So there we are. Happy with how that's come out. Look at those circles. That circle looks lovely. Masking tape left on there, we'll get that off. That fin flash there looks lovely. It's gone a bit over the panel line, which again, I can come in with my cocktail stick. And I can just scratch that away. In fact, I'm gonna to have to do that under a magnifier, so I'll do that off camera. And then, um, and then we're good to go. So there we are. And as I say, this is probably the shortest video I've ever made with a with a build and uh the reason i'm doing it is because i want to get a video out there so you don't think i've just left this project behind like i do with so many others so there we go we got our circles and our square underneath and we got our fin flashes and our circle on the top so um i'm going to go on now i'm going to scratch that and then i'm going to tomorrow i'll give it a clear coat just to seal it all in do some more deco film removal and then i'll be back with part 21 see you soon guys thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed this tiny little video bye for now